Aloha everybody and welcome back to Kai's Creatures. It is currently Black Friday and I am still in a semi-food coma from yesterday. I just want to lay in bed and sleep this day off. But I cannot do that because I received something in the mail today, so I have something very special to show you all. This is Simondoa concerfarium, arguably the rarest cockroach in the world. So before I get into all the stats and info on this particular species, let's rewind a little bit to unboxing earlier. All right, so these came to me from Paul Sutton over at Paul's Pills, link in description. And uh, pop these bad boys open. Seem to be a bit of an odyssey getting here, so hopefully, whoa! Hopefully they're all right. Ooh. It's a bit of an odd box. Like I can't find where I'm supposed to be. Splitting. Ah, okay. All right, down in the middle. Well, it's well insulated. I'll say that. The heat pack. Some shredded paper. Actually, I might be able to make use of this, but we don't care about that. What we care about is this. Let's see. Ah, don't you just love it when you have difficulty opening things on camera? Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> Well, it's securely packaged, I'll definitely say that. <sighs> Let's see if we can't find some of these little beauties. Hey, uh, whoop. these don't run away very quickly. There they are. They all seem to be safe and sound. Let's go ahead and release these little guys. See if we got everything we bargained for. So that's one. Let's leave these pieces in here. Oh wow, they're all piled in here. Uh, let's see. Two. Uh, free moss, yay. Well, oh my god. <laughs> Uh, well, the package said only 10, and I think there was easily that many just now. I had no chance of counting those before they scattered. <laughs> uh, but there's still more in here. Yeah, there's two more at least, so... Well... Huh. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a good count of them, because I had a fistful of them, and they just scattered instantly. But, uh... That's what this species is known to do, so... Yeah. But, I can easily say just at a glance, there were at least ten, if not a few more, so... Yeah, I definitely got my money's worth out of that purchase, so... Thank you very much, Paul, and... Yeah, you had some other pretty good stuff on your site, too, so I might be coming back again soon. So, now you might be wondering, what exactly is so special about this particular species? And honestly, it's in the name, Simondoa concerfarium, also known as the Simondoa cave roach. So while the common name Simondoa cave roach might explain a few things about this species, it does not explain what's special about it. The other common name I often see it sold under is the extinct in the wild roach, which is a really lame common name to use, but it does explain a lot about them. I'm just gonna put them away here for a minute because this species is not particularly good for handling. They're very fast and skittish. Now, let me regale you with the tale of woe that is the Simondoa cave roach. So there is an excellent article on arthurverts.org about this entire story and like all of the details that are known about it. And I will go ahead and link that in the description, but I'll just give a basic synopsis here as well. 
So Simondoe is a mountainous region in East Guinea in West Africa, right about here. Now this region is one of the most biodiverse areas on the entire continent of Africa and by extension one of the most biodiverse regions on the planet. Unfortunately, despite the many endangered or undiscovered or biologically important species that are found in that area, it is also one of the most minerally heavy and diverse areas in the world. And if history has taught us anything, it's that human beings cannot even keep their promises to other members of their own species if there's gold in them there are hills. Or in this case, bauxite, which is actually the principal ore of aluminum as well as gallium, which is a metal largely used in electronics. So even though parts of this region are protected since colonial times, it's Africa. And Guinea, as well as many other countries in the area, are not known for having the most functional government capable of keeping its promises. So some of the largest mining companies in the world were battling with the government to gain rights to mine this land, despite the important biodiversity in the area. But back in 2002, a bauxite mining project was finally planned in the area. But before they did that, they sent in a team of 13 biologists, including Polish entomologist Piotr Neskreki. Now, they actually discovered several new species on this trip, but Neskreki's discovery of Simondoa concerfarium, a small species of cave roach that was never discovered anywhere else in the world and seemed exclusive to this one cave in the region, was the most significant. Now, this species was very prolific in that specific area, but was simply not seen anywhere else. It seemed to live exclusively on the bat guano in that cave. That's uh, poop for the uninitiated. Thankfully, Piotr and his team collected as many specimens of the species as they could possibly find because they knew what the fate of this area was going to be. Not long after that, unfortunately, Mining began and the single cave system where this species was found was completely destroyed in the process. Given the species name Concerfarium because obviously the need to conserve species was highlighted very grimly by this incident. And at the present time this species exists only in captivity. There are not many cockroaches in this world that one could actually consider beautiful. But, you know, as adults and as larger nymphs, this species is actually really pretty. Which is a shame because cockroaches are thought of as being like invincible and you can't stop them. And that's not entirely true, unfortunately. And it just figures that we find a cockroach that can be objectively said to be quite a beautiful creature and we completely annihilate it as soon as it's discovered. So that is the tragic tale of the Simondoa cave roach. Now in more recent years, efforts to protect the area have been redoubled, but unfortunately, given that that species has only existed in one specific tiny little area and that has already been destroyed, it's sadly probably too late for these guys. Now, could they someday perhaps be re-released in another cave in the same area and resume life in that cave as they did before? Unlikely. Perhaps it's possible, but unfortunately we don't really know the answer to that right now because of the remoteness of the region. Biological surveys there are few and far between, and chances are if it could only survive in that one area, it would have gone to other areas if it was capable of doing so. And it's odd because it makes it seem like it's hyper-specialized, but as I mentioned a moment ago, they seem to do fine in captivity eating whatever you offer them. So why they were isolated to that one specific cave is currently unknown. And now that it doesn't exist anymore, it's gonna be hard to find out. So unfortunately, it is most likely that this species will remain a captive bred exclusive and will serve as a cautionary tale. So care of this species is one of the things that's really enigmatic about it. 
The funny thing is, despite the fact that it had an extremely specific native range, literally one cave, and its diet was entirely one specific thing, as far as we could tell. They seem to do as well in captivity as any other cockroach. You give them dog food, they'll go for it. You know, vegetables, bug jellies, literally anything edible, they'll go ahead and eat it. And they don't seem to have any trouble reproducing in diverse conditions. And they reproduce pretty prolifically. So really, it's actually quite odd that their range was so limited. You would think, like other species that are endemic to very small areas, that their needs would be extremely specific, and it would be hard to replicate in captivity, but they seem to do as well as any other cockroaches that you would find in the sewers. They do like a higher level of moisture. They are truly tropical, so they're not going to do as well in um, room temperature conditions. Although it's been shown to be possible, they're not going to thrive unless they are kept you know, in the mid-high 80s, probably. Um, they like a lot of humidity, but they're not going to do too badly if your humidity's mid. But yeah, their dietary needs are not any different than, say, a Madagascar hissing cockroach. So why it is they had such a limited range to begin with is a bit of a mystery. I, over the course of however millions of years they've been there, they did not disperse through the jungle and find other cave systems to inhabit, or simply live among the leaf litter and wood and things that they have been shown to be fine living and reproducing in in captivity. We simply don't know the answer to that, and unfortunately the conditions for truly understanding this species are now destroyed. But despite the somewhat paradoxical nature of its hyper-specificosity in the wild and its very generalist behavior in captivity, I think we're all thankful that this species is fairly easy to keep, despite all signs pointing to the fact that it wouldn't be. One thing, though, that does set this apart from a lot of other roach species is that most of the roaches kept in the pet hobby, like, you know, the Madagascar hissing cockroaches, or the uh, blabber species, like the orange heads and ivories that I keep, they're fairly bold. One thing that's different about these, which you might have seen with the unboxing video, is that they are very shy. Like, they are the prototypical cockroaches that will scatter in all directions the moment you turn the light on. So, <laughs> That is not common to pet roaches that are actually kept in the hobby, so they're not great for handling. They're very fast and they're very shy. Because of their beauty and their rarity and the interesting cautionary tale behind their discovery, that does not stop them from being one of the most sought after species in the hobby. So as you might know by now, I do eventually want to do roach breeding as a business, but um, the few species I have are probably not gonna get me quite there yet. This species, however, will sell very well once I get them to a colony large enough I can start selling them. They are one of the top three species I wanted to keep for that, along with the rhino roach and the emerald roach, which are also very sought after. But with this species, it's not just about the money. While I do want to start selling some as soon as I have a big enough colony to justify that, I also wanted to actually donate some of them to zoological institutions, to biology labs, places like that, that might be interested in an incredibly rare and enigma enigmatic species that is extinct in the wild. And while hobbyists have done a good job of keeping this species going, it would be good to have more professional institutions and actual scientific institutions keeping this species alive. You know, learning things about them and, you know, running those, you know, tests and scenarios that perhaps the average keeper like me is not really going to be able to do. I consider myself an entomologist of sorts, but not technically. I don't have the degree or anything. I am just a hobby entomologist. And I think it would be good for the species to have people who have, you know, a doctorate degree's worth of knowledge on this sort of thing and, you know, federal and state funding <laughs> to be looking after them as well. 
And perhaps if we have more professional biological institutions learning about these things and taking an interest in them, perhaps we can revisit the possibility of possibly re-establishing them in the wild, if that's possible. But that's not going to be known if we can't really do better surveys of the Simdoa area and determine the possibility of that. Because right now, that area's not being studied as much as it could. So my goal is to propagate these lovely little creatures with the hope of establishing a brighter future for them. And if such a tragedy can befall a cockroach, just imagine how much danger many other species in the area could be in. But that's all I've got for today. So until next time, guys, take care of each other, take care of the earth. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Mahalo and aloha.